Hi all, me again. Now, last year, we started a, a very irregular series of segments exploring the daily life of people who don't often get showcased in our behind the scenes material. And we'd like to bring that back again this week with an origin story for someone that joined CIG last year directly from the Star Citizen community and made a big change to the quality of our trailers and weekly episodes of this very show. Now we'll have a sprint report for you in the second half, but please give a warm welcome to one of the folks at the very heart of making ISC possible each and every week. This sounds like me. Last time I thought it was me and it was Justin. One of my favorite parts of being a gameplay capture artist is being able to inject a little bit of fun into the B-roll, like Raftron. Or the cave full of Picos, which still nobody's found. My personal favorite has to be riding on the missile, like Dr. Strangelove. It's actually my desktop background at the moment. <laughs> Before coming to CIG, I worked as a freelance cinematographer. I started freelancing when I was still at university. Um, I actually didn't tell anybody I was a student. By the time graduation came around, I couldn't go to my own graduation because I'd been booked at another university to film this. After uni, I just went full-time freelance and started working on all sorts of projects from short films to feature films, documentaries, but my favorite thing to work on was always music videos. Really just passionate about visually telling stories. When I got the opportunity to come here and work at Cloud Imperium Games, I nearly bit the hand off. I was so excited because I was actually a backer. I first pledged in 2016. And one of the things that I always loved about Star Citizen was everything is so beautifully lit. I think being a backer before coming to do this job really helps. I've already got years worth of just memories of going, okay, there was a place I found that one time that was pretty cool. I think I know how I can get back there. Knowing all the different ships, their interiors, all of that was like a massive help when I started working here and it's really helped influence a lot of what's going on. One of the most rewarding parts of the job is working with the incredible marketing cinematics team. My boss, Jesse, is amazing. He's got such an incredible um, resume working on most of the things that I grew up loving. We'll sit down for an hour and just go through some of the shots and just getting his feedback is so incredible. Working with Justin and the editorial team over in LA is fantastic. Justin is so full of positive energy at all times that me being a grumpy Brit, um, at first, I think there was a little bit of a clash where I was like, I don't understand how a person can be this full of positive energy. But he's really uh, rubbed a lot of that off onto me now. Um, so every time you have a call with Justin, it's amazing. It's like you, you leave it feeling way more energized. As a gameplay capture artist, one of my main roles is filming the B-roll for ISC. Uh, but I also work on the patch trailers, getting to show off all the features of an upcoming patch. As well as working on other gameplay trailers, such as the Alien Week trailer or the Hover Quad trailer. When features reach um, a particular level of stability, um, we put them into the live environment, uh, which is where you guys play every day. Before that, we have the PTU. The instability there is generally not great, but it's being worked on. Before that, we have Evocati. Evocati is usually very unstable. Before that is where I spend all my day. The biggest challenge of this job is trying to work around a lot of these issues. There isn't always an opportunity to get a bug fixed in order to capture with it. So we have to figure out a way to capture it that still shows it, but it avoids all of these issues. And then on, it'll be my job to go into the game and try and capture that and show that off. Trying to make it look as cinematic as I can, but also trying to really make it look honest to the way that it's going to be when the players get hold of it. Coming to work here and actually being a part of the experience of seeing behind the door and seeing the incredible work that goes on here is fantastic. Honestly, 
the best thing about working here is just being able to play with all the new features before anyone else. I've said to quite a few people now that it wasn't that I wanted to work in the games industry, I wanted to work here. Spoiler alert, it's never going to be me, because yet people see and hear me more than enough as it is. Like in this upcoming all-vehicle sprint report that I'm going to start right now. Right now. Right. As this latest free fly comes to a close, let's start our special all-vehicle sprint report with this look at fan favorite, the Corsair from Drake Interplanetary, currently taking its first steps into gray box phase. It's here that the internal layout developed in white box will be further explored and developed, making certain everyone involved is happy with just how everything fits inside. As we push inside, we can see the hangar bay here at the rear of the ship. From there, we work our way through the main component room and into the habitation area. And beyond that, the center point that serves as general access throughout the ship. Up here in the cockpit, current thinking is that this will be pushed farther along in process earlier so it can serve as a sort of general style guide for artists working on the rest of the ship. But farther along in the pipeline, let's take another look at the continuing progress of the Drake Vulture as it pushes through final art phase with work now beginning on LODs, as well as these early tests on the wear and tear shader you can see here. And once VFX and lighting passes begin, it's easy to see that the Vulture will no doubt make a fine looking addition to the Drake collection of spacecraft. Banu Merchantman explorations continue with these white box explorations of more internal areas within, including the medical center, security room, and WC Suite. And I'm going to tell you, the internal discussion about potentially including even multi-species facilities that are specific to the Banu and even the Xion here has been pretty intense. I'm pooped just thinking about it. As work continues on the interior of the Banu Merchantman, other staff continue pushing on the exterior with this quick look at the absolutely ginormous landing gear and rigging tests that are currently underway. Now landing gear and the related compression animations are essential in effectively conveying the true heft and feel involved when the ship successfully touches down. It's the little things. The really enormous little things. Work also continues on the Scorpius from RSI as artists take one wing to final art ahead of duplicating and reversing it for the other three. There was also recent work on the entry and egress points and even additional tints. And finally, before we let you go this week, let's go deep inside the hull sea and take a nice long look at its current interior. Folks who have followed along with the development history of the Hull C will already know that it began its journey through the ship pipeline quite some time ago, before it was eventually moved to the backlog until much needed technologies could be built. When it came time to pull it out of mothballs and start up again, many aspects of the shipbuilding pipeline had continued to evolve, along with the visual expectations of everyone involved. So while work on the upcoming cargo refactor continues, members of the EU vehicle content team have been gently bringing the whole sea up to modern Star Citizen standards. This includes work on new tractor beam and remote camera UI being developed with, I'm sure you've probably guessed it, the ever popular building blocks tech, which will allow players to successfully operate this unique addition to the persistent universe. And while its smaller sibling, the diminutive Hull A, is scheduled to arrive before it in the upcoming Alpha 317, 
We'll continue to check in on this economy-altering vehicle as it continues its long journey from concept to completion. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Will Price, like so many others, came from the community and that his work is an essential part of making ISC each and every week. That some of the biggest and most anticipated vehicles are currently making their way through the ship pipeline and that, and that the internal battle for the merchantman's toilets has only just begun. Now, don't forget that the free fly that's currently underway ends real soon. Check the robertspaceindustries.com website for all the details. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you back here next week.